the thumbs up if you can if you can see that if we're live at the moment. You just tell me and we'll you just start chatting and I'll start. <coughs> so it should be uh, clearing your throat. Should be six seconds in. And we will have a bit of a lag, so that's gonna be we'll be talking and mumbling on here while while I'm waiting to see if if this is going actually live. Right. On. Scenes that the reason why we're going through this is because this is the first time we've been live. I've been live in two years because of connection problems and all that. I gave up on it. Then we had the house renovation, so just bear with me, and then we'll get straight into it. We'll also wait for some people to catch up and That's all right. that type of thing. Right. Okay, good. Yep, we got Sandra. See you. A thumbs up from Alex, Georgia. Hello. Paul, <laughs> beauty, love your channel. Thanks, Jet Washer TTV. Okay, Shelley, hello from the Upper Murray. Cool. All right, good. Looks like we're we're going all right. Oh, I'll take glasses off. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and welcome to our first live stream in a couple of years. And I am so pleased and happy to be able to do this live stream with a very special friend of mine and guest, Peter. I call him Peter the Prong Man, but it's Peter Nickel. He's the inventor of the Prong tool, the suite of Prong tools, and he's with me today, and we're gonna have a bit of a chat about that. We're gonna sort of have a background chat on all about how this came into fruition. We're gonna go through some of the trials and tribulations, why he had to shut the business down over the last couple of years, and then why he's starting it back up and that's all the good news so thanks peter for joining thanks me very much welcome 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 good hello everybody okay so let's i suppose can you give us a, a, a brief sort of background on why the prong and i'll grab one off the shelf there's a, there's one two three five of them and this is the main one this big son of a bee here the long prong. So there you go. Give us a bit of a background, Peter, on why you started this. Well, I, uh, I've been a, a person that's always tried to find different ways of doing things. And I, I'm a gardener of sorts. And I, um, have a, a, I, was, I have a garden that I try to keep and maintain. And um, some years ago, I just got so fed up with breaking uh, garden forks and wooden handled tools. And I've that, done that a lot. And I, I just thought to myself, there has to be an easier way. And um, I'm a marketing consultant, um, have been for many years, and uh, a bit of a, an inventor of sorts. I've made a few little things myself. And But I had a client um, who was a broadacre farming specialist uh, company in Toowoomba, where I live, and um, they um, had these uh, big broad scarifiers, which um, sort of I looked at and I thought there has to be something where we can make something ma for a manual tool. So I approached them and I said, look, can you draw this up for me? And they did, and we ended up with this, um, this was our first one. The name of the company was called Gessner Industries and um, they became my first uh, partners. And um, we, it evolved over time and probably the most important thing that did happen was this foot pedal, which uh, became a, a secondary fulcrum as well. So this uh, slight angle here, um, this um, uh, very, um, this is forged steel. Uh, it's, it's placed into this tube it's then swage, which is like crushed around it, and then um, then it's um, fully uh, uh, welded, uh, as is everything else. So each one is is individually made, um, and uh, they've proven to be just the most wonderful success, far beyond my um, expectations. We've sold about ten thousand of them, and of course I. Unfortunately, uh, uh, banks don't sort of take kindly to 70-year-old men, and I'm now 78, 
Uh, so I've had to fund all this myself and uh, I've done all this from a fourth bedroom in my house. So I, I make all my own websites. Uh, uh, I do everything I can myself. I, I get a little bit of help with the coding for the pricing and the ordering online. But uh, by and large, everything is done through, um, as some people say, friends, families and other fools. <laughs> so uh, that's the story. This was the first in the range, uh, the long prong. And then uh, came the, the blue one, the, the son of prong. The which, son of prong. Uh, which is, um, again, made to all of the same uh, attributes. Uh, all handmade. Um, these are individually uh, cast uh, at a separate foundry in uh, in China where they're made, which we'll get on to in a moment or two. Um, but each one, I've been to China on a number of occasions and seen them made. The, um, the paint work and the powder coating looks very nice, but if they get the work that you hope they get, well, um, the paint won't last on them very long, but uh, they certainly are built to last and I've had no issues at all with any being returned. I've had um, the yellow one, I've had four in, in the 10,000 across the board that I've sold. They've been yellow ones and it's been where young men have decided that they're stronger than, than uh, anyone else in the world and they've put a slight bend in them and uh, that's... Uh, they're the only four that I've had. So I'm going to monitor the comment section as best as I can. Of course, if there's super chats and that, what I'll do is if I can't answer them immediately, I'll go back and I'll, I'll, I'll answer them separately. So I'll, I'll get them all collated and then I'll send you a message or a, co you know, a comment or whatever <coughs> so that you get that if I don't answer them. Um, <clears throat> but I'll do my best. I'm new again at the live streaming. We've got the live streaming hopefully going pretty good. Looks like it's an excellent connection. Uh, but with the renovations and with uh, everything that has been going on, and plus, I didn't want to be going live stream ever from my studio or from inside my office. This is an outdoor channel. I'm an outdoor person. And the whole thing is to be outdoors and having fun and enjoying yourself and all those extra benefits you get from being out in the garden. So I wanted to bring you live streaming from outside. And it took a while, it took a couple of pretty much software engineers to work it out and be able to get this properly wired up or Wi-Fi'd up so that we could actually bring you this and, and be able to move the camera around and that, which we probably won't be doing today because it's kind of an interview podcast type live stream. But in the future, I'm hoping to be able to bring you uh, all over our property, no matter where it is because we've tested the Wi-Fi out and it's working superb on every bit of this uh, three acre block. So yeah, stay tuned for more to come. But one of the questions in the comments section was, what do you use the prong for? Now I can talk a little bit about this. You can, Please do. You can then butter off the back of that. But what I use it for is a lot of things. I'll give you a quick example. Um, I was moving some logs. If you saw a video of mine a few weeks back of my outdoor storage area, you know, the python and all that that's sitting in there. He's been back there. He's living now in that area. And I, that's fine. I just walk around him and grab stuff. But I had a whole bunch of logs that I needed to, these are gardening logs, that I needed to move. I had them sitting in the back lawn here for about six months and they got really ingrained and stuck there. And because I just didn't have anywhere to put them due to the renovations and all that type of crazy things that's been going on the last 12 months. And so I'm trying to lift this thing up and I was going to break my back. So my go-to tool, of course, straight into the shed, grab the son of prong, didn't need the long one, and just lever underneath. And because you've got this foot handle, it, you don't need a brick or something like that underneath it. It's, it's got its own leverage and just lever it up, break the bead, so to speak, and then I was able to cut those logs one by one over to the storage area. Yeah. Then I've used them for Sorry. breaking clay, breaking clay, digging out even some small stumps, or at least levering them out once Dig I've got them cut. Dig it in if you want. Oh yeah, yeah, digging in. And then you've got that type of action. I don't know if you can see that, probably can't, but you can push down on the back of this. Um, you can, you can 
lever out plants, you can lever even, I've done several videos on the usage of this, but you know, it's just a great tool to have. It's my go-to tool when I wanna move something, did something out, and what do you reckon? If I may, I'd like yeah. to just uh, comment on the... Um, oh, you want to hold it? Uh, no, on the pink one, if I may. Oh, yeah, yeah, do that, yeah. Because um, um, the pink and the white are exactly the same, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, the pink and the white are the same. Um, I, um, I sold quite a few to Israel at one stage, so the, the labelling on this has got uh, uh, Hebrew on it, but um, the, the white and the pink are exactly the same, and I did this... Uh, specifically at the request of a, a dear lady friend of mine who um, uh, said that she liked using the blue one but it was a bit too heavy for her. Now this one here and the pink one uh, are, have been almost as I say I've got rock star status with, uh, with the pink and the white. Uh, the white is because men wouldn't use a pink tool so I had to do one in white, but they're both the same. <laughs> this weighs 2.8 kilograms, about five pounds, <clears throat> about the normal weight of a of a of a good quality uh, garden fork. What's wrong with using a pink one? Well, I, I I just had a lot of men going around and and buying the pink one and then spraying them white. So I, I thought, well, I may as well try and meet the market. Hey guys, this is a new age. There's nothing wrong with using a pink <laughs> prong. And the, the beauty of them is, with uh, especially with ladies, and with no disrespect, is that uh, ladies, by their very nature, do not have a lot of upper body strength. And um, they've found that using this gives this, this leverage, this, these angles and the foot pedal, and they're able to get tremendous purchase. I have uh, ladies in their late 80s who have been buying the pink prong because it once it gets into the ground and it... It, it wants to, uh, uh, and if you look at the websites, uh, my websites, you'll see my friend Edna McLean uh, using them uh, to a great extent. Uh, and um, she's a lady over 21, a bit like myself. And uh, th these uh, have proven to be extraordinarily uh, successful, both with men and women who are in the older age bracket. Uh, it can be used in pretty well any hostile environment that you like um, and have all of the same attributes. The beautiful thing is this V here which snags and grabs uh, roots and rocks and, and is strong enough and tough enough to uh, be able to uh, t take the any hammering or belting that you want to give it. Um, they're designed to last, um, they're easy on your back as I say. Um, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm just, before I go to heaven, I hope, I'm hoping that I can uh, make them a global brand, which is beginning to happen, thanks to Mark and other work we're doing. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, I love the story behind the small business. I love that you won that award in Sydney as well with yeah. the uh, innovated Innovation. Yeah, we're finalists in the National Innovation Awards for Australia, which is... A big thing. I went to Canberra for that, and uh, that was announced. So that was a big thrill. Yeah. A big thrill. Yeah. Uh, part of the journey. But I just don't back people or small businesses just because they're struggling or a small business. I back them because I like the products. Uh, I get a lot of requests. I mean, I'm probably twenty a day, and you know, they're all that's all fine. But um, it's just that. Sometimes those products just, well, a lot of the time, they just aren't good. And I've tested a lot of products behind the scenes that I haven't brought to you guys simply because at the end of the day, I've said, look, I'm afraid I, I can't back it um, because it's just not, not good enough yet. So, you know, with all due respect, please go back and start working on it and improve it and uh, let me know once it's improved. But this one here, uh, I do use the whole suite of them all the time. And that last one is the weeder prong. We might as well talk about that, and then we'll move on to a few other points. This is um, uh, was initially designed to take broadleaf weeds out of lawns. It's uh, it's about a uh, a walking stick height for possibly the market that I, I initially identified it for. Um, 
I designed it up uh, on a board table in, in China and um, they've made the most magnificent job of it. It's got the same attributes. It's got a, uh, a, um, a forged uh, tine in here and, it, uh, it, and it's thinner and it, it really allows for greater penetration into broadleaf weeds. But I have found that it's such a tough little critter that it's really good for uh, a domestic garden with his rubble and, um, and, and light roots. It, don't try and dig out a, a gum tree with it, but, uh, but I, I, it only weighs 980 grams, uh, which is just a little bit under two pound in the, the US uh, equivalent, I believe. And um, it's so light, and beautifully balanced, and it's a, a really nice little go-to tool that you can just walk around in the garden with. Whereas the other ones, uh, they're built to last, they've got a bit of weight in them. Uh, the, um, the, the, the pink and the white weigh 2.8 kgs, which is about five pound. The, um, uh, the, uh, the yellow one is um, about 10 pound, about the same weight as an iron bar. And the blue one is um, about 4.5 kilos, which is about nine pound. Uh, so, you know, they're, but you do, if you want something to last, and you want something to face up to the challenges of rocks and roots and, and, uh, and, and, and will be still easy to use, well, you've got to build it and it's got to be built properly. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to build something that, because uh, I must say that I've thrown more uh, broken wooden handle tools out than I can possibly imagine. Just been unbelievable. So, Peter, you were you were kind of um, on fire. We were, you well, we were doing quite well. Um, I was I was promoting the prong, and then of course, uh, COVID hit, <coughs> didn't it? And uh, that's when the, the your business, like many others around the world, went into a downturn. Um, simply because of the supply chain breaking down, governments making terrible decisions. I'm not going to get into politics, but I blame politicians for all the bad things that's happened to us over the last couple of years. So that then let's focus on the business though. So what happened? We ended up having, like I made an announcement on your behalf and you put an announcement on your website. It was, uh, well, going into mothballs, would we say? Yeah. Correct. Well, um, I, uh, I was actually in Panama when the pandemic broke and uh, like a lot of things with business, uh, my, uh, uh, my business has made me a lot of friends and there was a person over there that had bought one and had written to me and uh, a friendship developed and I went over there and I only soon, not, uh, I arrived, it was on my 75th birthday and I arrived and uh, I no sooner arrived and had to come back and I got the last plane out of Panama which is uh, almost the title of a book or a film isn't it, the last plane out of Panama. Um, anyway I crawled back home to Australia and, uh, and it became very evident that uh, trying to, well a container for example went from about $6,000 US to around about $25,000 US. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, it was just, um, why, I don't know. I, I can't get into it because I simply didn't know, but all I knew was that I, I just couldn't afford to do it at that rate and get a, a price that was fair for the clients or customers. And uh, so I put it into mothballs, uh, but the inquiry still kept coming and it's been consistent both from Australia and from the United States, thanks to the videos that uh, Mark has done and my own efforts at home and the websites. And, and it, it, it just became self-evident that there was a need out there. And um, I decided that uh, at my age, now 78, that I, I'd do my level best to get it out there into the market again and as I've done with all of this, uh, put my own money into it. I've never had to, never been able to go to the bank and borrow money to do it. So it's all come out of savings and out of intellect in my head to put everything together. And um, about uh, uh, due to ill health, um, brought about by a um, 
uh, a vaccine uh, reaction that I had. Uh, I've been hospitalised 10 times and I've now been diagnosed with uh, stage four kidney disease. So my travelling days are over and provided I look after myself, I could be here in another 10 years, but no one ever knows. Uh, but I just wanted to make this not so much, yeah, if you like, my last hurrah. <laughs> and, Come uh, on, Peter. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. Uh, well, I, I don't want to go anywhere, but uh, I've, I've got no family. I've only got two cats that I adore. And uh, it, it's um, I've had a wonderful journey so far, and I certainly have no plans to check out, and I'm not looking for any sympathy here. But it's just that you asked for the, the background to yeah. it. I can't travel overseas anymore because... Travel insurance wouldn't take me on. Uh, and uh, so I thought, well, and when you get older and you're retired, the big thing I found over the two years is it's being relevant. As you get older, it's, um, for me in particular, I found it very hard to find out what to do. There's only so many men that you can meet for a cup of coffee down the local coffee shop. And uh, so I decided that... Uh, I'd, I'd reinvest again in it and, uh, and, and make sure that the supply chain in the United States was uh, far more um, uh, uh, fluid than what it had been. Um, uh, the, I, had, did, I did get some help to get them over there initially, but it was a checkered amount of stock. There, weren't, there wasn't the full range. So now I've got 1,200 units going into a fulfilment centre in uh, Michigan, which I picked as a potential central point for them to be delivered. And uh, they're going into, um, they've been ordered uh, and uh, paid for, and they're in production. And uh, on the websites, you can buy them with a, a very significant discount. Uh, can I talk about yeah, that? Yeah, go, go straight into that. Yeah, uh, yeah, <clears throat> well. yeah. The, um, as I've said, quite truthfully, I've, uh, I've got enough money to last me till the end of my life, provided I die tomorrow. But <laughs> I, I just, um, I've, I've put a big chunk of change into making sure that I've got sufficient quantities of stock going into the United States and to make sure that they're moved quickly. Um, I've put a, a very big discount of 25% on them for those who prepay now and uh, they'll have to wait about 90 days before they would be expecting delivery. That could be a bit more, a bit less. I'm probably saying a bit more, uh, but this way I can judge the, the market. If anyone pays and they're uncomfortable and they want their money back, without a doubt, they get their money back completely. Um, but um, it will give me an, an idea as to when and if I have to reorder. Uh, of the 1,200, there's a sales mix there of, um, of 100 or so of the, um, of the yellow and the blue and the pink, etc. So uh, anyone in the United States is encouraged to go to... It's a 25% discount, by the way. Uh, so it's a, it's a sizable sum to save, and uh, that the US uh, website is www.theprong.com, and the Australian one is www.prong.com.au. I'll put all the details in the description below <laughs> after this live stream is live stream after this live stream is finished. I'll put those details down there. So. Um, now I think some people would be wondering, and I've I've pestered you with this over the over the years. Why can't we get these tools made in Australia or the US? You know, uh, because you, there's there's always that elephant in the room with China. I know China make some of the Tesla fleet of cars, and I know they make the iPhone and all that type of thing. And I know I'm not having a crack at Chinese people. I might have a crack at their government, but not the not the people themselves. They're hardworking, and there's lots of good people over there, you know. And we work with Frank, who's uh, well, maybe not his real name. It is Frank. It, Frank it is? Zang. Frank Zang. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Frank Zang. Yeah. Okay. And um, so Peter's had a great relationship with them, and they do make a good a good product. But look, um, if I'm talking on Peter's behalf, 
you've tried a whole lot, haven't you, to get this made locally, but it's just not possible. Well, the last two years, while the thing's been in mothballs, um, there's been a, a migration of a lot of business people out of China. Uh, but I, I would be less than truthful if I didn't say I didn't try. Um, I tried India, uh, but they wanted, a, before they'd even look at it, a, a minimum order requirement of 50,000 units. Well, of course, I just didn't have that sort of money to play with. And uh, I was, they were untested. I hadn't, you know, getting models and prototypes made up again and making sure they meet the rigorous standards of the welding that I need. Um, so that, that went out the door. I tried a couple of people in the United States who, who just shunned me. Um, I had, uh, I mean, just shunned me. Uh, and, and of course, the big thing is this, uh, the, the tine at the bottom requires foundries and uh, foundries are not all that <clears throat> you know commonplace around the world in the western world anyway no not anymore no, and and they're very hard to find so i i was i was always pleased with with um, with the chinese results and i persevered and then when this sort of covid thing seems to have gone into the background a little bit, I hope and pray for everybody, uh, I decided that I would reinvest. And it's been a, a, the last three months while I've been putting life back into it has been really good. Um, and uh, I'm just uh, hoping that, uh, that I'll get the support and I can get them into the hands of people who will tell their friends and make a, an ongoing business for for my, um, for the future. Uh, how much future I've got, I don't know, but I've made plans for the future so that the business can keep going. Yeah, good on you, yeah. Well, it wouldn't have been an easy decision, I don't think, because you're coming out of mothballing the business. I know, you know, behind the scenes, you were saying to me, that, like, that's it, and you're pretty upset about it, that that's how it ended, but you came to terms with it. And uh, yeah, I guess, well, it was a constant support, yeah. you know, like I'd be getting one to two emails a day. I kept the websites going. Uh, nobody could buy from them, of course. Uh, I just blocked that out. That's now live again now. Uh, but um, what I did was I was finding that there was just this support there that I could judge from people reading back, back uh, videos of your stuff. Uh, and, and they are quite a remarkable tool and, and as I said my health um, and I was really worried about just like for the last two years without having something to really love which I do with this product mm. um, I found that I was becoming a bit irrelevant and I just needed something to uh, to give me more purpose in life and I thought oh well uh, I can't travel anymore as I said earlier uh, and I thought well Rather than going to Italy and laying in the sun, I'll, <laughs> I'll sit up in the bedroom and make and sell more prongs. And uh, so it's all my own money. I think uh, just in round terms, in the next few weeks, I'll be putting about $50,000 into um, paying for the, uh, the product and, of course, the shipping and the, getting them to, um, to Illinois and, um, and, of course, here to Australia where I've got... Um, models coming as well. Uh, the price, by the way, on the websites includes uh, the delivery to your uh, address that you put on there. I won't, I won't say to your home address in case you've got porch bandits over there like I've been hearing about. So wherever you want it sent to, it'll be sent to you. Uh, and, um, but uh, it, it's, uh, there, there, it's been a a renaissance for me in the last the last three months since I decided to go live again and uh, Mark was uh, wonderfully supportive of my determination and um, uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm enjoying every minute of it. So there was evolution Wendy I think said she's disabled and uh, that's the tool for her. Oh, that's lovely to hear. That's interesting, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, that is yeah. interesting. I'm not sure which one you're looking at, but yeah. uh, 
I'm not sure whether you're in a chair or not, but uh, if you are, probably, and if the, the soil is reasonable, have a look at the um, the weeder prong. It probably would be the lightest, and uh, but then again, I don't mean to be patronising. You decide which one you want, of course. Uh, but remember, it will be about, uh, if you buy now, you do get the benefit of that discount, but it will be at least 90 days before they come. But and Zenith is saying you, you can't ship them to the UK, can you? UK, uh, Europe? At, at the moment, um, I'm, I've got a gentleman in Germany who is looking at uh, taking on a container of them. And at the moment, that is the only thought I have. I'd be keen to have um, uh, somebody, if they wanted to reach out and see if we could uh, reach an accommodation, we could. I've got so much money tied up in the US and Australia at the moment, I can't afford out of my own pocket yep. to, to put, um, uh, get a, a clearing house in the, uh, in the United Kingdom to do it because I, I haven't, um, to market, I haven't tried very hard at, at Yep. trying to establish. <laughs> There's a lot of cool comments coming through, guys. Thanks for that. Oh, please repeat the name of this tool. It's the prong. P-R-O-N-G. And, and if you, wherever you are in the United States, www.theprong.com or in Australia, www.prong.com com.au. I couldn't get it uh, in the United States because, believe it or not, prong in the U.S. is is a rock band. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, and they protect. You never told me that. Oh yes, yeah, a rock band called called prong. What do they like? I don't know. I don't like rock and roll much. Oh, but... I do. <laughs> oh well, prong is they. Uh... <clears throat> so I, okay. I when right. I when I tried to get the the website registered some years ago. Uh, I was told I couldn't get it, oh. so that was that's oh. what happened. I'm just reading the comments. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of people saying how they they're enjoying the tool. That oh, that's purchased good. It. So there's a, quite a bit of support in the comment section. Oh, there. that's lovely. Yeah. That's lovely. Thank you very much for what you've done. I I um, oh, I do okay. I do know that. The the, the um, we dropped out, have we? No, no, no. Tony was saying if like, if we could, if I could pick one of the prongs, obviously you can't. Most people can't get the whole suite. Which one would I choose? Honestly, um, this is the one that I use the most, the son of prong. Um, I'll I'll use that big prong if I'm digging a you know clay out, um, or someone said in the comment section to go back a bit, you know. That to me is easy to handle, but it's also really strong and robust. And if I'm, you know, working out into the garden and I feel like doing a few more reps, I can just do these <laughs> ones. I can pump out about 400 of them. It really gets the buys going and the forearms. But um, yeah, this one is the easiest one for me to handle and the strongest one, probably the one I use the most. That one, I'll, I'll roll a big log with the long prong and I'll, you know, if I need to chainsaw it or something, I'll get that out. But for most tasks around the garden and even digging in garden beds and digging out plants, I'm using this one. So that's what I'd go with, yeah. The, if you're on a bit of agricultural land and uh, you've got fence posts or wooden fence posts, um, uh, they're wonderful for getting uh, out, um, digging out rocks and roots in, in big uh, country. Uh, the other thing, uh, can I just trouble you to pass me the yellow one. Yeah. Um, this is common to them all, but uh, it's not uncommon for people to tie um, a little bit of chain around here and uh, with a hook on the end of the chain and to dig out star spikes or, 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 or hard bits of log that they want to not break or anything like that. Um, and they and lever it forwards like that. They just lever it, they just, uh, the chain hangs down, it's tied around and then they just lift it up and, and it moves it and it brings it and you just keep on uh, jacking it up if you like. Yes. And it's proven to be a, 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 an unintended consequence of their, of their multiple uses. You can do that with pretty well any of them. Um, but the, the lady prong and the, uh, the general prong 
for the older cohorts of people in a domestic garden setting, <coughs> pardon me, without doubt are the, um, the go-to tools. And um, they're light, they're strong, and it saves uh, ladies having to depend, again, with respect, uh, on men folk to come out and help them with some tasks that are a bit beyond them. Uh, I just um, I just know that the comments I get about about just how helpful they are to older Australian or older Australian uh, older people, men and women, about how good they are. How, how much is the blue one, the, the sun of prong? I can't tell you off the top of my head because it's got the discount in it. Oh. You just have to go there. I just don't have it with me. So go to the website. Go to the website. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because it depends on where your viewers are. Yes. Um, I, I must uh, point out that um, the um, being a, a babe in the woods with putting stuff into the US myself, um, which has been a, a massive learning curve, is that. Um, I got the prices from China and everything was all ready to go. It got, and then, then I was told that everything from China going into the United States now attracts a 25% uh, uh, import duty, which makes a big... When did that come in? Uh, well, I believe it was in 2019 okay. under Donald Trump's uh, oh, yeah. presidency. Yep. And um, so that makes a big difference to the... Um, the pricing and of course there's different rules and regulations regarding uh, the, um, uh, the the um, the what I'm looking for um, for the uh, packaging no well the packaging and the and the shipment with different rates of um, burden rates of taxes for the oh. uh, for the environment environmental costs and stuff so there is a, a, a you know a, 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 a big a big uh, difference there in in terms of the of the sums. Yeah. Uh, but I'm very happy with the people that I'm using in the United States to do the fulfilment for me. They're called e-fulfilment services. They seem to be an extraordinary ethical company. I've registered. I've paid, put some money into their escrow account to allocate it. Of course, there's all these different handling fees that they have. They've got to take it off trucks. They've got to unpack pack the crates, then they've got to put them into different sections of their warehouse. Mm. I've had to do barcodes. It's been a uh, it's been a wonderful journey. I've yeah. enjoyed it uh, because it's it's got the old grey matter. But no no business is easy. I've been talking to a few people lately, especially when we've just done that done the renos. I'll I'll be bringing a video on our renovations. By the way, I've had a few people say, Mark, when are you going to show us your your pantry? And, and because that was the main sort of crux of our renos and our pantry is really functional. Well, we never had a pantry, but now we do have. We turned our dining room into a pantry. And, uh, but anyway, talking to all these tradies that come through and all these guys running their own businesses, it really is a nightmare to run your small business and even to run a YouTube channel uh, that, that's moderately successful. You, you, you get all, you draw all the crabs for, from the government for a start, but then there's all these administration hoops that I never thought of as a, as a small business runner that you'd have to do and it just gets crazy. And then you start getting taken away from your core business, which is, you know, um, selling prongs or making YouTube business, making YouTube videos because you're trying to uh, deal with all this extra administration and all that in, on the side, but you've done pretty much all of this yourself. Everything, like everything. You, you yourself. explained earlier the website, well, of course, the invention, and then going through. I mean, how long did it take you to go from? How did you dream it up? Well, I, I just was in the garden one day and I just bent and broke another one of these cheap jack, you know, garden forks or a, yeah. a wooden shovel handle, and I. I just said, oh, bugger it, there's got to be an easy way, yeah. easier way. And uh, I, I had it designed up by a client for me and uh, they became a partner in the business, but they sold their business, a very, very successful business, very profitably. And we had a, an easy accommodation, so I, I bought their share out. Yeah. Um, and uh, I went to Las Vegas with them. Uh, the Chinese let me sit on a stand at a trade fair in... Las Vegas and I got 
good, um, I've got good inquiry there, but supply, you've got to be able to, if you've got to, people are interested in something, you want to be able to give it to them. Yeah. And I, I, I just thought, well, the only thing I can do, and it was piecemeal in the past, getting into the United States, and I thought, well, the only way to do it is this, and this health issue that I had with this um, uh, inoculation that I had has seen me hospitalised ten times in the last six months, and uh, it's left me with pneumonia and a whole range of things, so my health has been... So I can sit down and think, and uh, and as long as I can keep on paying the bills, I can think and pay bills and hopefully spend a bit more time on the phone with Mark. Yeah, well, speaking of supply problems, um, like I'm trying to get a line of gardening merch out, like a garden shirt, you might have seen me wearing it. The problem I'm having is is trying to get that product overseas from Australia. It's it's really difficult. This like if you go online, there's a whole bunch of what they call 3PL, um, like that you, that that can supposedly help you do this. But if you go to every one of them, like we have, it, it's just a, a real difficult process. And a lot of them will say, no, we can't get that t-shirt or that long sleeve shirt or that hat into the States or into Europe or into the UK. And it's quite a frustrating thing. And I'm working on that at the moment, plus working on the website, because, you know, I do sell a range of merch myself, but it's through those third companies uh, that, and they're fine if you want to buy a generic t-shirt and that that's cool from Teespring or Spreadshirt. I've got that, but they don't do anything custom. And, and I've been working on a long sleeved gardening shirt that's made from recycled materials and all that. It's coming soon, so don't bombard me with, with questions on it but, um, and, and how you can get one because I haven't just got it yet done. But it's just that frustration that Peter was talking about of um, trying to get a product out is, is not easy. You know, um, I'd, I'd like yeah. to also say is that the corporate arrogance of the large uh, chain stores, the hardware stores who make you want to jump through 3,000 hoops to, um, to get their product into their, into, their, um, uh, into their box barns or whatever you want to call them is, is, uh, is, is just designed to, for a small business like mine. So that is why I've gone online with them because I just couldn't afford to um, give them the, the, the rake off that they wanted. And also, um, I'm afraid that I've found that in mom and pop hardware stores that uh, garden tools aren't sexy. So people come into a shop and they say, oh, I want to buy something in a garden tool, and they just say, oh, just down there. And they go down there and the prong, uh, there are people, there are 50% of people, maybe more, who will just look at the prong and go, I understand exactly what that does. But there's another percentage of people they will look at it and just say, oh no, I'm not a risk taker, I don't want to use that. So by having a website, having Mark's endorsements, having plenty of videos, uh, I'm an ex, I'm a, well, I still am a marketing consultant when I'm asked to, and there's a saying in marketing that says show the product large and show the product in use, and I can do that on the website with plenty of videos and and people can interact with me very quickly if they've got any questions, uh, as we're seeing here with this wonderful bit of technology. So um, that's, uh, that's partly why it's being done online, because um, trying to get into some of these large, these large hardware chains is just designed to, because, you know, anyone can buy a $9 shovel. Anyone. I, I, I can't sell mine for $9. I wish I could, but it's a bespoke item and it will last uh, and uh, it'll do the job it says to do. Thanks, Jeff, for the uh, super chat, mate. I must admit, I, I, this, is, this is a wonderful bit of science for me. I'm, I'm a bit of a tech head, but this is um, something I won't be trying. <laughs> well, uh, Peter, I've been wanting to get back into live streaming you know, for two years, it's uh, because 
this is, this, you, I mean, I've been reading most of the comments and I'll go back and I'll read them all again. But um, it's just a really good way to interact with, oh, the, you, you know, the subscriber base and all that and to have a guest on. Thank you. And, uh, and look, if I may say so, you are calling it how it is and mm. it's nice and refreshing to hear business talk like that and it's good to to just be frank and uh, fr like, 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 Frank, like, like yeah. Frank, <laughs> like Frank the Chinese business guy, um, real name. And uh, it, yeah, it's just good to have a chat. You have lots of ums and ahs and you're, and you're just spitballing, but um, it's a different type of content. It's a different type of media and you can interact with people. It's just nice to sort of be in the live zone. Well, Frank is, uh, just on that yeah. subject, Frank has been uh, wonderful in as much that he's been prepared to do the, the small production runs uh, because that's all I can afford. Uh, no point, in, you know, uh, I've been so poor in certain times of my life, I've been eating the dates off the calendar. But, uh, you know, it, I've, I've managed to um, claw myself out of some of those holes and, uh, and I've decided now, as I've said, due to health, to get back into this because I think there is a, a market for it. Uh, but Frank has been absolutely wonderful to me and it was he that put his own money up to put a limited and not the full range into the United States. But it was enough to prove that there was a market there and it, it gave Mark the opportunity when he promoted it to, um, to tell people that they were available. Uh, but there were, there were issues. It was at the height of the pandemic where uh, those that were there in the United States, the delivery drivers were, were, were hard to find or not allowed to drive. I, I have no idea, but, um, but now uh, the, the people were by and large very supportive of what I was doing. Uh, and uh, Frank has been there with me all the way. I Thanks, Keeley. Keeley for the super chat, sorry. Uh, I hasten to add that uh, Frank uh, owns his own uh, business making garden tools. It's called Kai Lin, K-Y-L-I-N, and they make shovels and forks and all of these ones that we've been talking about uh, for the US market in lots of 50 or 60,000 at a time. I've, I've been there to the factory oh, three or four times now. Uh, I've always had wonderful uh, uh, you know, uh, I've had a wonderful welcome. Get so on. It's interesting, ground yes. level China. I've never been to China. I don't know if I'll ever go. But you, you, you were telling me, yeah, the, it's it's kind of uh, like a, a, a land of two faces, isn't it? You've got the the people that you deal with with the factory and down to earth give you the shirt off their back. Exactly. And then you've got the also the government and the police to deal with that watch you and. Well, I do, you, you sense you sense when you do go there. Yeah. Um, I went there last time, and I stayed. The last time I was there before I got sick in the pandemic, yeah. I stayed with Frank and his wife, which is a great a great privilege. Um, and I had a and I said, look, I've got to report to the police. And uh, anyway, we reported to the police, and then we then had to go back to Frank's um, body corporate where he owns it to get the evidence that he owned the, this massive uh, unit that he had. Then we had to go back to the police, so that was tough. But the prongs are, the prongs are made in a, uh, a rural place, um, which now down the road uh, has a city of about 8 million people in it. <laughs> but uh, the town of Lei Wu um, is uh, a rural-based place. And, and, and consequently, because of the cold weather, uh, he's able to call on uh, the skills of the farming community to work in the factory to um, to make the, the products because they understand welding, they understand the science of these things, yes. and it's a constant source of, of income to them. So Frank Frank uses um, not only their their, their brains yep. but their their extraordinary talents. There's about 150 people there. Um, last time I was there, I. I stopped at a roadside stall and I bought all of the fruit that they sold, which was not a lot of money, but I took it all back with me. But on the way back, I stopped at a big, a big um, supermarket and I bought um, 
150 bottles of beer, large bottles of beer. And um, I think it was the biggest sale I'd ever made. Anyway, they, and everybody thought it was a great joke. Alcoholic? Uh, oh, yes, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And, of course, I asked the production manager and they said, yes, you can leave it there. And oh, they can, really? They can take one home of a night. And, but it, was, it got around the factory very quickly that the fruit and the, and the beer was there. And it was, not, it was just meant to say thank you for all the things that they've done in the past. Um, it's all too often not the case with people these days. They, they just don't know how to say thank you. And it's just to me yeah. so important. Oh, it is. It it's is so important. Yeah, people relationships with this online world and everything, but yeah, it's it's more important than ever. I mean, mm. it's always been important, and it'll never not be important. You know. Yeah, but, Wendy, thanks for the, the super chat. Thank you. I'll I'll just mention something here. Um, when things all caved in, I had a uh, hundred and twenty white prongs and a hundred and hundred and forty pink prongs left. Uh, before I decided to go into mothballs, and they were here in Australia. And I had a, a, a small mention of them in a national newspaper called The Weekend Australian, where there is a gardening writer there, and uh, she wrote that uh, a lady had written in wanting to dig out some plants, and she was wanting to know whether she'd dig them out or poison them. This gardening writer wrote back and just said, www.prong.com.au. <laughs> And I sold um, the whole lot out in three weeks, uh, which was a, a halcyon period for me, because I had to wrap them and stack them and take them down to the post and get rid of them that way. But the beauty of it is the number of calls that I had, phone calls, from people who wanted to know a little bit more about this journey of mine. And there was one lady who rang me from a, a Hunter's Hill in Sydney. And uh, I always remember, she said her husband had just uh, gone down to their farm. They were comfortable people. And, uh, and, 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 and I said, oh, what's he doing down there? She said, oh, he's down at our farm and he's, he's gone down to mourn. And I said, oh, what, what's happened? And she said, oh, we've just put our 12-year-old our, our, uh, golden retriever to sleep. Well, the next thing, we're on the phone and we're both crying our eyes out uh, oh. about this. And that's the thing about this type of connectivity yes. that you can have because yes. um, I love everyone they, they, yeah. they all write back and say you know gee they, this has just saved me a lot of time and, yeah. and it's uh, been worth the you know been good on you you know yeah, yeah. very happy yeah, that's a nice story that is a lovely story yeah. yeah but to move so many so quickly with that sort of promotion and no negative feedback no ne no negative feedback in terms of quality the job they do price all been it's all been that made made the made the journey very worthwhile yeah good on you good on you i mean so how long has the prong journey been going now then when did uh, it really about, what, first start about 2010 okay, I, so. I i was in it yes it's been 13 years um my my uh, a very quick story here i owned a little farm when i first arrived in Toowoomba, where I live, um, in 1980. And Toowoomba is my hometown as well. So we have a connection there too. <laughs> so uh, I was there one day with Dad, and my father uh, left me in 2009, and uh, he was 97 when he, when he went to God. And, um, but he'd been a gold miner during the Great Depression. And uh, we were sitting down at this um, beautiful little setting on this little farm I had, and I said to my dad, I tell you what, dad, I, th I, think, I think there's a bit of gold down here in this, in this uh, little stream. He said, I, I know there is. And he said, I hope you never find any. And I said, why do you say that? He said, because once you start looking and you find some, you'll never stop looking. Right. And he said, that's what happened to me. And he said, we, we made a living out of it uh, during the depression. And when you invent something, there's this connectivity to it that you just can't let go. Yeah, yeah. You just cannot let go. You know that people telling you that it works and you just have to, and in the end, you just, you, every waking moment, all of your, like my, my consultancy work and my training of small business people, all the money I made was going into patents and, 
uh, and, and, and trademarking and doing it all myself, every spare moment. And it, it was quite addictive, but I'm a single man. I have no children, um, apart from my two cats. Uh, and uh, I, I, um, I find that this is just great fodder for my inquiring brain, I think. So it hasn't made you a wealthy man? Oh, no. As I said, I've been that poor. I've been eating the dates off the calendar, mate, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, but it's been the journey. It's yeah, been, yeah. Sometimes it's not the about the money. Yeah. No, the journey no. is sometimes better than the destination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the people that I've, I've met and spoken to and uh, people who have asked me to garden clubs to talk and, and do things in, in within a, a region where I live. Mm. Uh, but, um, and, and, and uh, you know, it's, it, it is Australian. Uh, they can't take that away from us, no, mate. No, they can't. They can't take no. that away from us. Thanks, Yildiz, for the uh, super chat. Thank you. Mm. So um, I, um, provided I hold up, uh, you know, uh, and uh, but be assured that uh, if this uh, if this experiment, if you like, into the United States in particular works uh, with the you know the very substantial discount that I'm giving just to get them in there and to get to, to see how the market is, um, if this works, well, the, the legacy is they will be around for a long time to come. I Hi, Jill. Hope. Jill Humphreys, is it? Let me just, sorry, sorry, mate. Yeah, that's all right. Um, I've got Jill, Jill Humphreys in Arakansas. Kansas, Arkansas. No, Arkansas. 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 Right. How you going? Wow. Get into it. That's Bill Clinton country, I think. Is Arkansas, it? I think. Arkansas. I think my limited knowledge of US politics. Okay, cool. Yeah, yes, it is. It is V. Williams. It's possible to get the prong in the USA. Um, they're on the way. Yeah, yeah. they're on the way. Yeah. If you go to, especially if you're in the US, <laughs> www.theprong.com. And uh, if you buy now, there's a 25% discount, but please be prepared to wait about 90 plus days for them to arrive. If at any time you're uncomfortable with that, uh, your money would be refunded immediately. Uh, so, uh, but I'm doing that just to make sure that those that uh, are on Arkansas. the queue. Arkansas. 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 Yeah, Arkansas. I think that's. No, 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 it's different. Oh, oh, so it's spelt, oh, okay, but that's, it's, it's pronounced Arkansas. Is it? Must yeah. be, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, we, we don't want you to pronounce any of our names because Toowoomba and Wagga Wagga and other places like that, we've got some good ones. Uh, but we're here in a beautiful setting on a beautiful midwinter's day uh, on the north coast of Brisbane. And uh, I've, come, I've come from Toowoomba this morning where it was uh, cold as a politician's kiss. And uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, it's been, uh, it's just lovely sitting here in this beautiful setting with Mark and looking back onto his uh, massive renovation, which I had the privilege of seeing earlier. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the design elements going back to the prong were, were created by by myself in terms of an idea, which is what an inventor does. But Gessner Industries, with their extraordinary knowledge of uh, ground engaging tools and scarifiers and things like that, uh, brought to the table, they had uh, a drafting office with maybe eight or 10 draftsmen in it. They drew it up. Uh, we made well, probably about 100 locally uh, and, and Again, why China? Uh, even with Gessner's making them, I couldn't, I couldn't make them. Uh, the price that they were to, to be made was the price I currently sell them at. Oh, gee. So, you know, um, I even went to a minister of the Crown in Australia here, the Minister for Industry and Science, who was our um, local member here in Toowoomba, or in Toowoomba, where I am, come from. And uh, I brought them in with him. I knew him. He, he's now no longer in politics. 
And I, I took them in and I said, is there any way these could be made? He said, you've got to go to China. You've got to go to China. This was before the pandemic, of course. Um, and there are people leaving China. I understand that. And I, I wish them well, but all the retooling and the costs that would be associated with such a move for me, plus this draconian minimum order requirement, I just, and, and the great support I've had from Frank uh, deserved deserved better. Yep. I even felt a bit disloyal about even looking around somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But now I, I have no doubts that I've made the right decision. But trying to get people to make something that requires old technology like foundries and, 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 and handmade in particular, like all these things are, you just can't do it. But the ones that we made as a test market we were we were just selling them at a price that was reasonable, but they were they were they were costing us out of the factory here in Australia what we're selling them for now to the customer with it, yeah. and that was that was without a label or a bag or anything. But that that's that mm. that's again, I like that Jake about as cold as a politician's kiss. Mm. That's again politicians' fault, and uh, that the, the way they have managed the economy. The way they've managed the energy um, and all these inflation and all these things and the supply chains, the way they've stuffed things up has, is just making things exponentially harder to make in, in Australia and in the Western world. And uh, it's a sad thing, but it's a reality. Oh, it's, it, it's, it's, um, it, it's a, there's a graveyard of good ideas that, uh, and it's only been my absolute determination and my uh, and and am i lucky or unlucky but i don't have a family to support i don't have i've not had money having to go out to educate children i think the most unselfish thing a person can be is a parent i've never been a parent and i've been able to use those funds that i've earned through my consulting work to invest in this thing but it's been a journey that uh would i do it again Bloody oath. Yeah, yeah, good Bloody on Bloody oath. But, on uh, you know, it's... Um, and the people along the way... Yeah. Just diamonds. Just diamonds. Mm. Uh, and uh, and you've been one of them, mate. Oh, thanks, mate. Yeah. Thanks. It's been a total pleasure. It's been fantastic meeting you. It was that connection in Toowoomba as well. But uh, you reached out to me and mm. uh, I had no hesitation at all. I just love the product and I love the story behind it as much as the product. And uh, yeah, so I suppose we'll wrap it up, Peter. Is there anything, you know, give us the website again. We'll finish up. Remember, this isn't sponsored. Peter's a mate of mine. I do get a small kickback for sales of the prong. But um, at the end of the day, you know, it, it's a labor of love for Peter. And uh, so just give us that website. Right. Well, if you're in the United States, it's www.theprong.com. Uh, when you go there, you can buy online, uh, you go through PayPal and use your cards, and uh, that price includes the 25% discount, and the full price includes the delivery to the address that you instruct us to send it to. Uh, in Australia, it's www.prong.com.au, it's 25% discount as well there. You can buy online. Again, in both cases, I point out that it would be 90 days, but at least that way your order is assured. And if at any stage prior to delivery you feel that you want to back out, you will, of course, get a full refund. Uh, and I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart to you, Mark, and to those lovely people out there uh, for your time today. No worries. And if they want to get in contact with you, can they just email you? They can the email me from the website. Yeah. Yep. Got yep. questions, just email Peter. He's right on to it. And uh, yeah, so we'll wrap that up. If you liked this video and if you're watching the replay, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I'm keen to keep these live streams going and I want to get regular with them. Now that I've got this working, hopefully I haven't replayed it, but hopefully this has come through pretty good. I know I've got to work on the mic a little bit and get that squared away a little bit more. But thankfully, it wasn't too much wind this morning. It's such a beautiful morning. So I was able to get away with the microphone and not having to have a dead cat on there. And, uh, and it wasn't too much wind buffering.
but I'm going to yeah, keep refining and getting better at the live streams and I'm going to get some multi cameras set up going to do some garden bed demonstrations going to take you all around the acreage hopefully we can go for walks together this is what I really want to do in the live stream side of things I think it would be a heck of a lot of fun and now that I've got that technology allow me to do that I'm pretty excited about it so yeah thanks a lot for watching thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and thank you Peter and thanks very much and thank you everybody have a lovely day cheers okay thanks guys well, and I'll read back the uh, the comment section thank you Mark did we get many people asking questions or yeah the, in? yeah there was uh, there was uh, quite a lot of um, of lovely people oh